Hello all my data people. In today's video we are going to be going over RLS or row level security within Power BI, how to set it up, how to make it, how to make some dynamic RLS filters, um, how to get it published and into your reports and what it can kind of help do to help manage some of your reports and access and some security stuff with your data. So let's get right into it. So let's say we've got a report done up. Let's go through our model real quick. Just a very basic model. We've got some lookup tables, some dim tables going into our sales table, right? So we're essentially just going to be focusing on putting RLS, putting row level security on our employees table. So whenever an employee is viewing, we're either managing the data that an employee or a user of the report is viewing. So we only want that employee to view data relevant to them or their team or their division um, for those sales that they produce, right? So that's going to be what we're focusing on that employee table and filtering down our data for our RLS report to be filtered by those employees. So let's start with looking at our employee table real quick. So over on our, our over on our employee table, we can see that we've got a couple of um, fields on our table. We're going to break it up by the division. So within our employees, there are four sales divisions that we're going to break up our report by so we can apply real level security to those four different divisions and then also we do have a email over here for each of our employees that we can apply um, dynamic rls filtering to as well so we'll, we'll use this as a sort of way to get some dynamic filtering applied to our um, report and then we will also use just a division filter to start out with just the basics and uh, go go into the dynamic stuff as well so let's start out with just that division one so let's go ahead and add in a new role, right? So let's go ahead and the way that we do this is we will go to on the modeling tab. So whenever we're adding a new RLS role or whatever, whenever we need to add new permissions or new RLS security roles to a data set, it's going to be on the modeling tab. You're going to go to the manage role section. So just go ahead and click on that. And when you press on create, where you're going to get is just a new button, new role item with all of the tables that you can select from to start and create your RLS filtering from. So let's go ahead and call this divisional filtering. And let's go ahead and grab our table. So now that we've got the role named on the table section, so on that second part, what we're going to do is we're going to click on those three dots in our employee table and we are going to add a filter to our division. So we're going to have this division go to sales division one. Let's actually rename this to sales division one. All right, so let's go ahead and save that. So now if we go ahead and put on, let's just throw on some random visual here, which just the division. Sorry, so now if we filter all of our data down to division one, right? So if we filter down to division one, this is what we should expect to see. So whenever we have somebody in a division one filter, we would want them to see this data in the report. So let's go ahead and view as. So once we've got that rule applied, what Power BI allows you to do in the desktop is you're able to then test out that role to essentially see that it's going to be providing you those values that you want it to show. So if you go to view as, it's going to show you all of the different roles that you can select from that are in your RLS model or in your model as RLS roles. So go ahead and select that one that you just created. And we should expect our numbers to drop down to what we were looking at when we filtered for just that division. Right, so now we can see that we're viewing by sales division one, and we can see that all of those numbers kind of drop down to what we expected when we just were filtering by sales division one. Right, so again, if we're just looking here, now we've got everything, and if we filter to sales division one, this is what we would expect when we are looking or viewing as sales division one. Right, so same kind of thing right there. Right, so we can we can set up this RLS filtering so that whenever we publish this report, what we can do is have all of our users, if they're in sales division one, they will only see this data, right? So if our data is sensitive and we don't want to have different divisions viewing different other divisions data, sometimes it's good for competitiveness, sometimes it's not. We don't want people to see who's doing what. For this case, we just want to see each division gets their own data, right? So let's go ahead. We've got that first division created. Let's go ahead and show you how to make that role in. Actually, let's go through all four roles here. Just going to go through all of these real quick. Sales Division 2. Sales Division 
So the reason why I'm going through this is just to kind of show you the benefit of doing this dynamically versus statically, right? So clearly there is a difference here, right? So if we go through, oops. Sales division three and sales division four. All right, so now we've got our four divisions. Let's go ahead and save. So again, if we view our roles, we can now view by three and now we'll see division three is selected, right? So now we've got our roles set up. Let's go ahead and publish this and see how we can get this implemented into our reports for viewers. All right, so let's go ahead and stop viewing here and let's go ahead and publish. Once it's published, navigate out to your workspace. Wonderful, there we go. And so now that we've got the data set published, where we wanna go to get to those rules that we just created is click on the three dots of the data set and go to the security tab. So on the security tab, we're now gonna see those different divisions that we've now created. And so now the way that RLS works when you don't have it dynamically set up is you can publish all of the roles, you can publish any number of roles that you want, and then you just need to establish what users go into what role, right? So if we wanna say the user I'm signed into goes into sales division one, we can go to sales division one for the item I'm signed into, right? And then if we go to test as role, let's save those changes first, save changes, and we can test this role. And since I'm a part of it, you can now see, right, we're filtering to sales division one. Right, so now with our full data set is published, however, we're viewing it through our RLS role with the sales division one selected, and so we can only see that data in sales division one. Right, and so if we go into sales division two, now we can still see, or now we can see that again, it's all down to sales division two. And so all of those permissions and access can just be done based on those members of those RLS groups that you've set up, right? But clearly that can get pretty tedious if you've got a lot of different divisions or a lot of different teams or however deep down you wanna go, setting it up without being dynamic, it can definitely get to be a lot, but it's definitely a good start as well, right? So let's go ahead and show how we can do the same type of grouping with just a single RLS role as opposed to the four different roles we have. All right, so let's go ahead and we can save that. And let's head back to our model here. So back in our model, instead of doing four groups, let's go ahead and delete these other ones. All right, let's keep one group. Let's name it to divisional filtering UPN. And what we're going to do here is we are going to use something called the user principal name. So within Power BI, there's a function um, with it, there's a DAX function that is called user principal name. What that's going to return in its calculation is it's going to return the actual user that is signed in at the time of viewing, right? So on the service, when a user is viewing the report, the UPN, the user principal name of that user viewing the report will be their email address. Right, so we can, I'll show you how exactly what I mean in just a minute, but that's kind of how you can look at a UPN. It's going to be the Active Directory email address that your Azure has set up and assigned that individual within within all of your environments, right? So, so a UPN is just a unique identifier within Microsoft's environment that can identify a user accessing your report, right? So the way that we can filter down to a divisional level based on the user login as opposed to having to go through all the effort and assigning those 5,000 employees to a different group member for the different division and then a different team, right? That's very tedious. You can instead just set up the RLS filtering dynamically by using some calculations within the table you're trying to set RLS up for, right? So let's keep it on our employee table, but this time we are going to not do a specific static value, but we're going to instead use some DAX within our lookup, within our RLS role, right? So for our DAX calculation, what we're going to do is we're going to go with a lookup value. And with, within this calculation, it, it is kind of a bit funky. You do not have the auto fill features, the same kind of DAX features that you're used to within 
the formula bar, so you do have to kind of type it out manually here. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the lookup value to essentially look up the employee's division based on the UPN that signed in, right? So based on the person viewing the report at the time, we're going to look up that user's email address, reference that email address on the employee table, and then pull in their division so that the division that we're going to show, the data's division that we're going to show, is going to be based on the division that is in that person's viewing data, right? So let's go ahead with finishing this up here. And this is going to be the email field by user principal. All right, so let's go through kind of this lookup calculation here. So what this lookup calculation is doing again, it, we are going to be giving us the value. So the output of our lookup value calculation is going to be this first argument. So the first argument within the lookup value is going to be our output. So we're going to output a division based on the email on the employee table matched to the user principal name value. So again, that user principal name value is the email of the person signed in and viewing the report. We're going to match that username principal to the email on the employee table, which is then going to give us a division name to match to our division name on our RLS filtering. All right, so let's go ahead and just validate that. Oh, misspelled this. User principal name. There we go. Right, all good, and let's go ahead and drop on let's drop on user principal name into here. All right, now let's go ahead and publish you again, and now let's see how our divisional filtering works. And so again, knowing the user that we're signed in as and with this data demo set, with this demo data set, I don't have any other active emails in this directory here. So the email that will be matching is going to be for this user, right? So this user is a part of sales division one. So what we should expect to see within our service report when, when we're signed in viewing the report as this user, we should see sales division one filtered for, right? So that same kind of setup we were looking for previously. Sorry, let's go ahead and publish. And let's look for sales division one when we are filtering for our new dynamic role. All right, so now we're going to go back to our model again, go into the security settings again here, and this time we don't need to add anybody to the group now, right? So the way that UPN filtering and dynamic RLS works is that any the UPN is already set up, right? So it's already going to be a part of your model, and anytime a user access accesses a report, this filtering will be enabled, right? So whenever you go into test as a role, again, we're testing it through the contact role, which is again in sales division one. And there you, there you go. You can see kind of this is how it will look, right? So again, we're accessing through this user. So when we access the report, we're viewing by the divisional filtering UPN. So we can see that all of the values are only for sales division one based on this UPN that signed in, user principal name that signed in, right? So that is how you can quickly and very easily kind of set up some great security for viewing of your Power BI reports through RLS security, totally dependent on how your model is set up, right? RLS definitely has limitations. You can't use inactive things. You can't have too many different roles stacked on top of each other because they just keep adding up and giving more permissions on top of it. So right, it, it definitely can start being a beast whenever you start getting into RLS filtering, but it's just make sure you go into it with an organized mindset and it's definitely a lot easier to manage RLS filtering through some reports and through dynamic filtering um, once you start getting into it if you do everything in a very organized fashion. Um, so that is going to be it for this video. Hopefully that helps get you guys kicked off on getting some RLS set up on your reports to help your viewers and to meet some of those needs um, from your reporting asks and uh, good luck and I'll see you guys on the next one.